welcome to Conversations from the Barn at Everwood Farmstead. These are casual chats with visiting artists, creaky barn, bugs, and all. Enjoy. Hello, and welcome to Conversations from the Barn. I'm Bill Underwood. I am with a very special artist today, and I'm going to ask her to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Kendra Balgren. I, um, I'm a painter. I've been painting my whole entire life, pretty much. Um, I also own a gallery. It was in Algoma, and now uh, we moved recently to Dousman, so we, we had planned on keeping the gallery running until COVID, and now the gallery just exists online. So it's the James May Gallery, and it's we have a website, and it's on Artsy. And um, I have two kids and two dogs and a husband, and we're living on four acres and have a beautiful garden this year. And then, um, yeah. The sad news for us is this is the final week of our 2020 Artist in Residence for our Artist Retreat Program. So you are wrapping it up for us. Talk to me about your week. Oh, it's been amazing. I don't want to go home. I feel like I, I don't want to go back to real life. It's been such a good week. It's probably been the most productive I've been in over a decade and the most anxiety-free I've been probably in the same amount of time. That's surprising to me when you say the most productive. You've, you, I think you told me you've painted more this week than you have in any given week mm -hmm. in a long, long time. Is that because the, the demands of the gallery? Um, t what, what, what has provided you more time this week? Um, well, being away from kids helps. <laughs> <laughs> That's the number one thing and then running a gallery is also really time consuming being around other artists really amazing works can at times be really energizing but it can also kind of stifle creativity in a way by I don't know like every by making it feel like I can't live up to that so then some so it can work both ways which is interesting what has surprised you the most about this week that's a tough question I feel like I I went in with pretty clear expectations um the weather was a little bit chillier than I thought it would be so I didn't have the proper clothing so I had to go to the Dollar Tree and hammer <laughs> and get fingerless gloves to paint um, you've been uh, painting in the barn all week mm -hmm. today you broke down a bit and had to go inside into the artist retreat space to paint yes. but otherwise you had the, the joy of painting in the barn for the week Yes, and the barn's been amazing. There's been a lot of creatures keeping me company, the pigeons, which you can probably hear a little bit on and off. I think the, you had a special visitor as well oh, on yes, one of your paintings. Yes, um, a lot of my paintings have been just sitting out wet, leaning up against things, and I came in today to find little mouse prints going up the painting and <laughs> little white little feet and then a mouse turd on top of it so he was telling me what he thought of the painting I think <laughs> but I'm gonna leave the little mouse tracks in the painting because the mouse tracks are actually on the white area was snow is that mm -hmm. right so I have little mouse collaborations in the snow which is nice. We actually planned that. We have <laughs> some relationships with a couple of mice around here that, you know, we brought in special just for you. Good little I love that. I, I love that story about, <laughs> uh, I mean, nature's always interacting with the artists on retreat, and we, it's some of our favorite stories to hear about how wildlife plays a, plays a role. People are fascinated with the chickens and oh, yeah. love the deer, but we haven't quite heard a story of wildlife playing that direct of a role <laughs> yeah. in an artist's work before. So 
the fact of leaving natural um, mouse prints on the mice prints on the snow is fantastic. Yeah, I have to leave it. The 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 gallery. What 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 caused? What made you switch locations for for the gallery? I mean, you were you were in Algoma, mm-hmm. which is another one of those areas. Chris and I have been there. A beautiful beautiful town, a small town, but with a lot of amenities. I remember the first time I actually heard about your gallery before even knowing who you were, and I was like, there's a, there's an art gallery here? Like, that is so unfair. <laughs> and now it turns out that it's you. Yeah, yeah. Um, we made it to Algoma. I taught at UW-Green Bay for a year, and Jimmy had a little ceramic residency at Clan Steel that was in Algoma. So we lived in Kiwani, which is just south of Algoma for a year, and fell in love with the lake and fell in love with the two towns. And when teaching didn't pan out for us, um, we decided we wanted a little more stability for our family, so we decided to buy a building in Algoma. And we took a year to renovate it. We lived upstairs in a tiny two-bedroom apartment with the two boys that were young. Wow. And got it yeah, renovated in a year. And then we've been running it ever since. I think this is our sixth year. And then my son, my oldest son, has a lot of health issues. And so his health took a turn for the worse. So we had to be closer to Milwaukee. So that kind of caused the move to happen. So we're about half hour from Children's Hospital Milwaukee now and I think we we've given our kids a better life being on four acres we moved yeah. right before COVID happened mm. so it was kind of a blessing and a curse because yeah. the kids got more space and out of the city but they you know it was impossible for them to make any friends right so we're still struggling with that they've been in school three weeks so that's, it's been a struggle. It's been a struggle kind of being the lone parent at home, mm-hmm. doing that, running the gallery, trying to work from home, and then trying to do online school with the boys. I mean, it was, it was impossible. This week then has been a true, yes. true retreat yes. for you in more ways than one. Yeah, it's going to be hard to, to leave tomorrow. Yeah. What is it what is it like to have to operate a gallery online? It's kind of miserable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I I really miss interacting with the artists in person when they drop off work. I really miss interacting with people coming into the gallery and I'm an introvert, so that's that's saying a lot. That is. Yeah. That I miss that part of it. And just seeing the work in person is so much different than seeing it online. So I miss that the physicality of everything and it's and it's sitting in front of a computer most of the day versus you know being in a space with the art interacting with it I had a studio in the gallery so I'd often work and and work on my own stuff so it's been tough I don't I don't like sitting in front of a computer Hmm. you shouldn't have my job (laughs) <laughs> you should keep your job. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Do you, uh, are you representing artists from the Midwest, all over the country? Where where does your where does your artist base come from? All over the country, and now online, it, it makes it a little easier in some ways that artists don't have to ship their work to us, so we're able to maybe have more shows and more artists. Um, we have a little more flexibility in that way, but it's just not, it's not the same. It's not the same. Mm-hmm. What, what about sales? Have you seen a dramatic decrease in uh, sales or? I mean, it's, it's been surprising. We had Artsy, I think, for two years now. So we had it pre-pandemic and I really wasn't putting much time into it and we weren't seeing many sales online. It was mostly coming from in the gallery. Mm-hmm. So then... So you were... The gallery was open to the public, but you also had an online yes. presence as well. Yes, we had to. Being in Algoma and 
sure. it being a small town. We had a lot of foot traffic in the summer, but in mm-hmm. the winter it would get pretty sparse. So we made the choice to have an online presence pretty early on and be active on social media and all that really fun, not so fun stuff. How would you describe your your artist, your your focus, or your artists of different styles all across the board? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, for a while we were doing three person shows with um, one three D artist, usually a ceramic artist, and then two two dimensional artists, which was an interesting pairing because my partner is a ceramic artist and then I'm a 2D artist. So it was always interesting to pair the, the three-dimensional with the two, two-dimensional and see how they interacted. Um, online, it's a little, little more difficult to, to have that same feel. Um, but we do abstract artists. Um, the show that just went live today, there's a printmaker, and then two painters, and the painters are more realistic, I would say. So it's it's pretty much just my own personal taste, and I'm doing all the curating. And I really love that. I really have an eye for it, and I could do it all day long. Did That's you, the fun part. Yeah. Did you have the subject matter of your paintings decided before you got here have there been any changes upon arrival to say with this blank canvas I'm going to do this now instead of this um I'm a pretty anxious person so I had it all (laughs) pre-planned so (laughs) I knew exactly what I wanted to do when I got here so we had the canvases built or we I mean my partner Jimmy built the canvases really really nice so I had that built and then I had the ideas and drew them out ahead of time because otherwise I I didn't want to waste a second of my time here. So I had everything ready to go, but then I have also been doing a lot of walks and taking a ton of photos that will hopefully inform future paintings. It seems like wildlife has been the focus or animals have been the focus mm-hmm. of all of your paintings. Is that n- normal for you, or was that just the, the subject matter that you decided to focus on this week? This week, I... Well, it was interesting because I, I got a commission to do a mural a few weeks ago, so my, my focus has been on this, this weird mural idea. I've never done a mural before, mm-hmm. and um, I, it's, it's weird working for clients who have very specific ideas and then I have very specific ideas so I was working on that idea for a while and then bringing these birds into um, these landscapes mostly water with fog bows and then um, the inspiration for it was my client he actually had a a book of poems out of Pablo Neruda and Hmm. I was like, oh yeah, and we were just talking about our our likes and dislikes and what could go into this mural. So then I started putting these birds and the fog bows and the Neruda poems all together. And then, like midweek, I'm I'm painting all these paintings, and then I hear from the client, he's like, oh, I don't like any of those ideas. <laughs> but it's good because it it really forced my work to go in a different direction because this is all new for me this week. So it's it's kind of exciting, and it's exciting that I have the time to just be able to experiment with these new ideas because if I was just at home painting. I have such a limited time that it's yeah. it's it's hard to experiment. You just kind of get into the groove of wanting to just paint, and you know it's it's hard to it's hard to let yourself go in different directions. So, so the birds and the ducks. This is new subject matter for you, or? Um, well, I I had some swans in paintings with the figure of a year or two ago that I went to the Richter Museum in Green Bay and got to check out a big dead swan Mm -hmm. that was stuffed and bring home and and work from, so that was kind of interesting. And then so 
this week, you know, I was thinking about the mural idea, and I'm thinking about, I, I need to bring some live swans into this, and live <laughs> birds. I, we don't need anything more morose than our world right now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just thinking about, like, hopeful images, images with color, and just to make myself happy looking at them. What's one image that you took this week that you're fairly certain you will paint or will become a focal point for a painting in the future? Um, There's this view up the path underneath the big oak tree Mm -hmm. with the pet cemetery. I took a few images from there that I really loved. And I I just really love that that spot on the property. That's a pretty popular spot on the property. Yeah. That's Chris's favorite spot in the whole world, actually. It's amazing. That it is a view sweet little spot. Is incredible. Especially in the fall. It's yeah. stunning. So as we... I'll leave with this. Artists that are thinking about applying for this opportunity in 2021, what advice would you give them? Mm, bring the proper clothing. <laughs> <laughs> um apply it's it's incredible I've done a few artist residencies in the past and I think this is one of my favorites it's it's been incredible um, what what causes you to say that what distinguishes this opportunity from others I think it just came at the, the perfect time I think in in my life and what's going on in the the world around like I for the first time in a really long time like I, I don't have a belly ache like I don't have this this foreboding anxiety it's I've been able to let everything go and it's been really really helpful well we close out this our our final conversation face to face conversation of the year with hats and scarves and mittens and <laughs> and triple, quadruple layers on. Um, It's not the same barn presence that we had when we started these conversations in July, but nonetheless, just as delightful. And so we're grateful, Kendra, for you uh, speaking with us today. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for having me and giving me this amazing opportunity. Stay in touch, please. I will do. Thanks for listening to Conversations from the Barn at Everwood Farmstead. Our theme music is provided by John Mark Nelson. Wishing you all good health.